My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's uh, video is on the subject of POTS. Now, POTS stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. This is a poorly understood and, more importantly, a poorly recognized condition, which, although not dangerous, can make a patient's life pretty miserable. POTS is characterized by symptoms of orthostatic intolerance. By that, I mean that the patient struggles to maintain an upright posture for a prolonged period of time. Uh, when they do so, they notice that their heart rates can shoot up, they get very unsettling heart palpitations, they may feel dizzy, they may feel breathless, they may feel tremulous, and they may even collapse. This is a condition that tends to affect mainly young women between the ages of 14 to 45, but it can also affect men, although men tend to be in a minority compared to women. And the problem is that patients who suffer from this just feel completely miserable. One of the interesting features of this condition is that it is often associated with a multitude of other symptoms, uh, which, and, and because doctors are not very aware of this condition, they only do basic tests for the conditions that they do know about. Um, and therefore, patients will go through a plethora of investigations which are not relevant or useful in making a diagnosis of POTS. When these tests come back normal, patients are often unfairly made to feel that they're either anxious or depressed or even mad, and the poor patient can then spend several years disabled, debilitated, unsupported, and continuously search for a diagnosis. I have about 400 patients now with POTS, and when I first make the diagnosis in my patients, virtually every patient has cried. They've cried because they say, thank God someone believed in me. Thank God someone says to me that it's not just anxiety, I may have something. Thank God I feel validated. So the most important question is, how do you make the diagnosis of POTS? Now, the current gold standard investigation is a passive tilt table test. Uh, the tilt table test consists of a table and the patient is strapped to this table, their heart rate and their blood pressure is measured, and then the table is tilted vertically and the patient's heart rate and blood pressure is measured. And as per current definitions, POTS is diagnosed if the patient's heart rate rises and is maintained uh, at more than 30 beats per minute compared to when they were lying down. And particularly if they are then also symptomatic. If they reproduce their symptoms and their heart rate goes up and stays at more than 30 compared to the way it was when they were lying flat, then you make the diagnosis of POTS. Now, tilt table testing is a specialized investigation. It needs specialized personnel. It needs specialized equipment. And it is not, therefore, very easily accessible. And so what a lot of doctors do is they do something called an active stand test, which is also called a poor man's tilt test. Here, the patient is simply laid down on a couch. You measure their blood pressure and their heart rate. You then stand the patient up and you measure their blood pressure and their heart rate and again see if the heart rate goes up by more than 30 beats per minute. And that kind of confirms the diagnosis. It's important to note that there is a difference between an active stand test and a passive tilt table test. With an active stand test, because the patient is standing up by themselves, they can do things. They can do things to reduce the onset of symptoms. Whereas with a passive test, the patient doesn't have as much control and therefore a passive test is better to try and make the diagnosis. Now, whilst both these tests are useful uh, to make the diagnosis, the problem arises when the test is negative, i.e. the heart rate doesn't go up by more than 30 beats per minute. At that point, the patient is often told, look, your tilt table test is negative, you do not have POTS, and they're discharged. The poor patient then continues to remain debilitated and is now led to believe that they definitely don't have POTS, and for many of them, the endless search for a diagnosis continues. What I would like to talk about in this video is that I don't think a negative test reliably excludes the diagnosis of POTS. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. The first thing to try and understand is what makes for a good investigation. And to my mind, a good investigation is one which reliably predicts what happens to the patient. This means 
that before we can be sure of how good a tilt table test is, what we need to do is a study where we take a bunch of patients with symptoms suggestive of POTS, we do a tilt table test, we divide that cohort into two groups, those who have a positive tilt table test suggestive of POTS and those who have a negative test result, which suggests of something other than POTS, right? And then what you want to do is you want to then take both groups and treat them as if they have POTS. And then you have to count how many people respond favorably to treatment. If we find that everyone in the group of patients who had an abnormal result respond favorably to treatment, and all the patients who had a normal res um, result don't respond to treatment, then we can confirm that a tilt table test is a good investigation. But unfortunately, no one has done that study. So at this point in time, we really don't know how good a test tilt table testing is for a diagnosis of POTS. Yes, it can confirm the diagnosis, but that doesn't mean that if it's negative, it reliably means that the patient does not have the condition. When a condition is defined by a test, as in POTS, we have to first and foremost know how good the test is. Now, I have several patients who sounded like they had POTS and had a negative tell table test. And when I treated them as if they had POTS, they still responded very favorably to treatment. This is not just my experience. I was at a conference recently. I spoke to one of the foremost authorities on POTS in the country, and I asked him, look, how many of your patients have POTS but had a negative tilt table test? And he said 50% of his patients who have POTS had a negative tilt table test. Now, there are several reasons why patients may have a negative tilt test and yet have the condition. Patients with POTS can go through phases, okay, and these phases can last uh, years, months, or even just days. And they can have phases when their symptoms are good, and they can have phases when their symptoms are bad, and they can have phases where the symptoms are just unbearable. And these phases, as I say, can last years, can last months, can last days, can last hours. These phases can also be dependent on external factors, such as the weather. They can be dependent on whether the patient has some kind of concurrent illness, like the flu. Uh, they can be dependent on hormonal changes. So most women will find that their symptoms are much worse around their periods. And most importantly, these symptoms can be a lot worse at times of extreme stress. And even within the day, patients with POTS are generally worse first thing in the morning, and their symptoms get better as the day progresses. So if a patient, for example, has a tilt table test late in the afternoon where their symptoms are relatively better or they have them when they're going through just a good patch, then the tilt table test may not show the required increase in heart rate whilst the patient still has POTS. It's also important to note that medications may impact on the findings. So if a patient is taking medications, that could blunt the responses and therefore the test may be falsely negative. Many of my patients certainly are so worried about the tilt table test uh, and the fact that they, that may upset their POTS that they're terrified of stopping their medications to have the tilt table test. And there, is an, there are other problems with over-reliance of the tilt test to make the diagnosis. Tilt testing is not done on pregnant women, for example. Tilt testing is not easily offered to pediatric patients without additional pediatric staff support. Uh, certainly around where I work, I can't find a center that is offering pediatric tilt table tests. And so the problem here is that these patients, pediatric patients, children, may continue to suffer. They may lose out on the most formative years of their life because no one has, been, no one has a, been able to do a tilt table test and make a diagnosis. So given all these problems, the question is, well, how do I make the diagnosis in my practice? Well, I listen carefully to the patient and base it on what the patient tells me. The first thing to understand is that POTS is one face of a bigger beast, which is termed dysautonomia. Whilst it is true to say that patients with POTS are more symptomatic when they're upright, virtually every patient, every POTS patient I have, will complain of a ton of other symptoms which are not related to standing up. 
these are all autonomic symptoms. Common symptoms that patients will describe are things like, I never wake up feeling refreshed. I'm always tired. I have the most terrible brain fog. I get heart palpitations after eating a big meal or a sugar or carb-rich meal. I have temperature dysregulation problems. Sometimes I'm really hot, sometimes I'm really cold. There are parts of my body which are really hot. There are parts of my body which are really cold at the same time. They'll talk about gut-like symptoms, IBS-like symptoms. So they'll say, I get abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, nausea. I don't feel like eating. And they often get breathlessness. They often get chest pain, which is often attributed to fibromyalgia. They will describe the fact that these symptoms have been going on for a number of years or months or years and that their traditional tests have been normal. They'll often mention that they also carry a diagnosis of something like chronic fatigue syndrome, joint hypermobility, fibromyalgia, IBS. When I meet a person who is concerned about, uh, who has orthostatic intolerance and who describes these symptoms, I'm thinking to myself, this person has POTS, okay? In fact, if I meet a person who is concerned about their heart rate going up on standing, but who has none of these other symptoms, the lack of refreshing sleep, the brain fog, etc., then I would be cautious of making a diagnosis of POTS. So you, you see, so I think clinically the patient will, just what the patient tells you, there's the variety of their symptoms, that constellation of symptoms and who they are uh, is enough to my mind to make a diagnosis of POTS, especially if no other good alternative explanation has been found. And in these patients, I just get on and treat them and see how they respond. I don't rely or wait for a tilt table test. I do do the tilt table test, but this is not really in my mind to make the diagnosis, but more so to try and validate the patient and to try and cover myself in that, you know, it's a saying in medicine that the, the biggest enemy of a doctor is another doctor. And once in a while, a doctor will write to me and question and say, on what basis have I made the diagnosis of POTS? And in that setting, it would help my defense if I had a tilt table test confirming that they had POTS, but that doesn't stop me from treating the patient. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that as doctors, we should be trying to treat the patient, not the test, okay? As I say, if the patient has all the symptoms, but the tilt table test is not positive, it does not mean to say that the patient may not benefit from treatment. Ultimately, our aim as doctors should be to connect with our patients and try and help them get better. And we should not be over-reliant on having a positive result before commencing management, especially in a condition like POTS, where management does not carry excessive risk, but can have a huge beneficial impact on a patient's quality of life. So I hope you found this useful. If you suspect you have POTS but have had a negative tilt table test, it may still be worth seeing a POTS doctor. It may still be POTS and you may still benefit from treatment. I would love to know what you think of this video. And once again, thank you for all that you do for me. All the best.